Hello, and hopefully this time I can say that this is the final segment on the homemade bowling alley here in my basement. Currently right now it is just at the tail end of January. It is too cold to paint things, so as I've shown you, the finish wall is built, but it's not painted. When it's painted, that's all going to hide a little better. It's not going to go away. And that's all good, and this is all good. This is going to get filled in because it's crooked as anything. Probably put a candle pin bowling ball design there. I might not care that this might get stuck in if I uh, paint it or not, because there's nothing really on the other side. All the wires and everything are on the board, so I might just leave it at that. At some point, I'm going to reglaze the windows. Well, take care of the rust. Believe it or not, there isn't heck of a lot of rust there. So, right now, I'm. it was kind of visible in the previous video. At the very end is the ball return. I got it on its end. And of course I screwed it all up. So anyway, it's kind of sitting correctly now. So this board was too low, so I raised it. Hence the filled in hole that needs to be sanded down. And I'm not sure how this is getting attached. So it's just slide in for now. I'm paying attention to what I'm doing and not. So this is about where it goes. And I screwed up cutting this board twice. I mean once. This piece right here. I had a piece of pressure treated but it I screwed it up with the angle I wound up being a couple inches too short then again the gutter isn't pressure treated but everything underneath is including this little thing right there so now it pretty much sits it's a little off, but that's fine. I don't know how well the ball's going to climb that, but... So, yeah, there's the angle. It's slightly off, but that's fine. And, and yes... I intentionally did make it so that there's a lip here. The whole purpose of that lip is so it'll help prevent, and it might not be perfect, but help prevent the balls from rolling back. So this might just have to go a little bit higher. Let's just find out here. There. And it's not sitting exactly the way I want, but then again, I. Might just let it live. And I'm not sure how I want this to be removable, hence why it's wobbly. It's not even. But somehow, with the other gutter, there might be a board that attaches the gutter that attaches to this. And that'll somehow, in some way, hold it. Now, the one thing I do notice, and I want to. See if I can fix it or not. Alright. This is straight. But when I Yeah, this is okay. Alright, that went crooked on me, but doesn't meet perfectly. I, I would rather this actually be a bit on the lower side because it's gonna want the ball to climb. And yes, it's, this is actually a little cockeyed. It didn't go in exactly right. So 
this is relatively level. That actually does have a downward slope to it. So that is where we are at. Trying to attach this. And maybe this will be brought upstairs and painted once I get it done. I well, It's all up in the air right now. Wow, do I suck. Trying to make the side rails. So I've got that angle wrong and the wrong depth. Ultimately, I got it to where I want. This falls about a quarter inch short of the gutter, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about that. Ultimately, it's going to sit a little low there, which is fine, and a little high here, which we want because remember that lip that exists. So if the balls are still in flight, this will keep them inside, hopefully, provided this thing even works to begin with. All right, so I made two of them. There's one. And there's the other, although this one's going to have another cut to accommodate for the floor. So what I'm going to do is take the height of this, add three quarters of an inch for, for the hardwood stock. That's not the type, but typically that's what it is. And go from there. I just took a couple of pins down just to see if they were crooked on the end. It doesn't seem that they are. Maybe my thoughts of using floor leveling compound may not be necessary. But we have a pin plate to make and who knows. Then again, like I say, not most bowling alleys don't have perfectly straight pin plates anyway. They might be flat, but they're leaning typically forward to a degree. So just checking the angle here with, there we go. And just, it, it can overcome it, but that's, plan is that it's not supposed to be able to. So the objective is if it works and, uh, is at almost regular ball return speed, it should be able to climb the ramp and go up. Let's see what happens. It does. Let's do that again, because I built something and it worked. Well, that, that makes me feel good. I didn't know if I'd have to put some angled lumber in there. Like I said, the only thing a little iffy is that, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. As I overshoot, it just comes back, and then I could just try again. So that's good. Move this mirror. That's so I can angle it from, angle it to the window. Hi. Hi angle it towards the window to put light where I need it, like maybe if I want more light down here, I lay it down on the window and direct it over there. So yeah, it didn't go together perfectly. I mean, it's as good as it's getting. It's nailed into place, but there we go. We got a ball return. The only thing it needs now is a nice pretty coat of paint. And pretty much this is all that I can do for now, as I don't have lumber to continue everything else. And I went and verified that, yes, this is pointing the right way, because I was wondering if it wasn't, because something seemed weird. And another screw was put in there because the pin plate warped a little bit. Or it was something I never noticed. Well, looks like things are going better than planned. One of these days i got to put the backlight in. And no, those pins aren't on the true ends where the 7 and 10 are. They're like an inch closer to center. It's just, I wanted to see how off things were. All right, that's it for now. 
along with a curtain rod, I've bought a black curtain so that, you know, you don't see the plywood pit. Anyway, I unfolded it and found that it's just a little too narrow, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Just get a second one to make the difference. It doesn't even make the width of the doesn't even make the width of this thing which I gotta make at some point so yeah add a second one that way there's a little more heft to the whole thing so I might even just entertaining the thought putting uh, putting the black stain on that just again to add more weight to it so so, you know, it just doesn't fly. It allows the pins to move, but not fly all the way to the back. Anyway, we tested the ball return, so we brought it here to what I call the no room. Because it's really nothing. And after I'm done, I left a little corner so I can walk around. But here it is. It's all painted. Since up here, it's, I got the heat on. Yeah, that block is a little off to one side. I thought I measured it properly, but guess who? Yeah, from here you can't tell, but yeah, it's pretty much all done. And of course, this is allowing for the hardwood floor for the lane itself. So that's what we've got at this point. And I'll show you what I've got done in the pit area pretty soon. Finally warmed up. I finally got this wall painted. And of course, like everything else, there's gonna need some touch-up work. And in fact, the trim I decided to put up there, it actually needs a second coat, which I keep forgetting about. And I redid the window. Now the fun thing about the window is it's metal, so just can't use regular paint. So I use spray paint, but if I use spray paint, it would leave a light blue mess everywhere. So I went outside, sprayed a bunch of it into a container. Then with a brush, took about four coats to get it to cover, but we did get it. And well, it is what it is. Now, of course, the windows are going to be, you know, all the runs are going to be scraped away. So, yeah, all the runs are going to get scraped away. But, yeah, this is as good as it's getting. It is a light blue. The camera might make it look blue-blue because of the contrast in the back. Yeah, it is what it is. I redid the glazing where I could. And where it's butt ugly, I did try to get all the old stuff loose. And what's there is stuck there. Window still operates, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it does. It's just, it just likes to lean to one side because the holder on that side's kind of rusted out. And like I said, there's touch-up work that needs to be done especially. Definitely some touch-up work. Like I said, it's only the first coat. I mean, there's always going to be a little bit of imperfection, especially when you're terrible at this stuff. But I mean, overall, this does look pretty good. And right now you might notice that as I'm looking, there's a line. And... The basement floor looks a little different here than it does over there. That's because I put down two coats of primer. It's not 100% dry. It's There's still a wet spot right there, but good enough. But I'm going to let it sit and dry a little longer, kill a little time. First coat is going down today regardless. And you'll also notice the three-foot section that's removable has been removed because in order... Because... That has to be gone if I'm going to be painting because when I remove that to, say, haul something large in or out of here, 
and that needs to go, I want the floor to match everything else. Under here, I gotta figure out, maybe I'm gonna drill holes where it's not important and pour some sealant in, because after it's painted, at some point it'll be sealed up. So, uh, I think I picked a color that will both, is both complementary and will help match the the finished uh, floor. Again, it's, we got porch, floor, and patio. Probably not the best choice, but the only one that I, and that is approximately the color. So it's a little more bold than the complementary color for this light blue that's really hard to show because of this light. There we go. Yeah, camera's making it look darker than what it is. And that on the floor, it's going to look pretty good. Haven't really done much to this except second coat of paint there. And I started making the door for the closet. I've been storing stuff in the pit for the time being. And let's see if it is going to let us play with the light. There it is. There's the door. It's gonna have, it's gonna have some trim in there just to dress it up. I was gonna put a third rail in, but then this this, this looks good enough as it is. It's hard to move here because I got a pillar, and I'm next to the furnace, kicking up dust. Beautiful. So that's what we got. So time to paint and go from there. If you say there's anything new here, you're definitely right. We got this wall painted. Well, there's still one piece I kind of still need to put a second coat on and keep forgetting. And I always keep forgetting to put some white paint there just to make it look better. It's the, uh, it's the sill in. Most of it's accidentally painted, but I want to paint the rest probably on a weekend. Like I said, we got it done. That looks funny because that's where the brick ends. And that's the water being shut off to the outside. Yeah, this needs a second coat. And of course we gotta do touch up work, obviously. Can... All right. It shows up better on camera. Maybe it isn't as bad as I think it is, but. It... Oh yeah, it definitely needs a second coat. It... I could see where some of the blue paint inadvertently got on there. Anyway, uh, I did redo these windows. Some of the paint came off when I was scraping it off, but it looks way better now. I even scraped the outside, well, most of it. Bla it chews through the blades really fast. Again, haven't really done touch-up work. That's a thing that definitely needs to happen. And I decided to uh, live with this uh, abomination there. Show the fact that I really suck at what I'm doing. Anyway, we got... Sorry about the barber pulling. The light that lights up the lane. When the three-foot section is returned, it'll be roughly center of the lane. I mean, it may not be dead nuts on. Kind of looks like it is. And... Yeah, until I get the clear seal on which is this stuff here. Put two coats of this on and once it's dry, the three foot section will return. Then get some wood to build the last gutter. We got the ball return, I've shown you that. And then a, some wood that will be slightly raised from the lane that will attach to the ball return. Might add some extra lumber to the ball return to make it sturdier. And a little, the piece of wood going across on that three-foot section will be a little higher than the base so that it holds in the three-foot section of finished wood when we get to that point. The idea is if something big has to be taken in or out, we can get rid of this three-foot section, move it aside, and haul big stuff in and out, which I've mentioned several times before. I did build the door for this doorway. 
it might be just a bit too tight. I'm going to find out eventually. And not sure if this is just going to be some computer display. If the internet works, internet TV, of course. It's a dirt cheap TV, in fact. Just so people don't even consider looking in and trying to steal it. I literally, after taxes, 211 bucks, 50 inch, 4K. Although I'm sure the, uh, it's not truly 4K resolution in terms of the native. And the pit is about 80%, 85, 90% closed off. Where is that light? There it is. Still got that little bit there and that bit there. The center piece there in the middle, that is just floating there. Not sure if that'll stay. Need more plywood. Candle pins fly. They're not like, they're not like 10 pins where maybe they'll go in the air ever so slightly and just fall back down. Candle pins, you hit a certain amount of wood just right. The ball and the pins can literally fly about 10 feet in the air. So we need something to protect the wood and, of course, the duct. And at work, in, when I use the uh, bowling alley that uh, I bring over, the pins in that, I have hit, I threw a ball as fast as I could, hit the wood and the ball launched and hit the building about six and a half feet above ground. So, yeah. That's why that has to be closed off completely. And yeah, this is supposed to be a complimentary color. It might be a little strong. And again, we have this door. It's got two strong magnets, which again, let's turn on this light thing. There we go. It's got two strong magnets on it, but I don't think that's gonna work. And for the same reason that I'm, you know, uh, haphazardly finding pieces and throwing them in here. Because I didn't have any good pieces that were straight. There's a three quarter inch and a half inch. And because of the difference, this door shrinks as it opens, as you can see. And it's on automatic. For some reason, it thinks it doesn't need the light. So this, you can't see it, but this whole assembly here, which includes this block that's hiding and protecting things from metal, slides back and forth to allow it to freely move. Although we have an issue right there, but I'm sure with enough poly, I can negate that problem. I don't think anything could technically hit that. So that's what we got right now. So going to be putting the first coat of the sealer on. I wish I thought of that before all this was put down. How I'm going to get under there, I'm not quite sure yet. It's, it's a thing I'm thinking about. Anyway, that's the progress. We're Getting towards the home stretch, let's see where we end up. We are upstairs. And what we got here is the three foot extended section for the gutter. And the beam that'll go between there and the ball return. I did find a couple of spots where I could screw it in and it's already somewhat secure, but this will be definitely a help. And so the, needless to say, the three foot section is finally back in its place. And while that's drying, I think it might be time to get this pin plate ready because after I'm done this, I'll show you how we truly are getting close to the end of finishing this project. Right now I'm gonna have to lay everything out, starting two inches away from that edge. Those are the most square over there gonna lay out the lay out the triangle everything a foot apart from each other on center so I'm gonna find 21 go from there and 
Then we'll uh, just draw in the circles, put the pins in, see if everything's fairly accurate. Might not see it, but the circles are there. And I drew the other lines for the six inches. Because you know, every they're foot on center apart. But then there's a row of three that's six, you know, half distance and the head pin. So one of the mistakes I've seen people actually do with homemade bowling alleys is, again, remember the foot apart thing? So they may not get that it's a foot on center. So in the face of the ends of the candle pins are two inches. So there's 10 between each. And when they do the next set, you know, set down of, you know, again, being a foot away, they just take their, you know, they take their ruler, mark down 12 inches and make those. And that's not the correct way. They're 12 inches apart on center in all directions. So the cheap and dirty way of doing this is putting your ruler on the middle of the circle and then it's gonna move on me, but so I'm gonna readjust this on camera. And you rotate this until the one foot mark. Like I said, I'm I'm gonna perfect this off camera. Rotate it till the one foot mark hits, and that's still in the center. This is approximately where that head where the next row of pins should start. So, instead of doing all the fancy math, that's the way I come up with it. So, I'm going to go and make sure this is accurate, and then start laying down the next row, and down the line. Of course, once I uh, made the cross hatch where the circle goes, I had this old protractor, and that inside biggest inside curve is two inches. So that made that easy. So I did a little cheating after I got that first uh, mark, you know, where, the, where they should line up. I then just measured it from the center, the center point there to the line to mark where the pins are supposed to go. It's like 10 and an eighth between rows on center and I just use that speed things up so I just want to see if everything looks okay now it, these are likely not perfectly put on in fact I can see a couple lines but that's okay because if you're within a quarter inch of the lines you're doing as well as a bull more or a uh, oh what is it the z4s do so from up here it Looks just fine. Looks fairly centered. So now the thing is, if I step back, which there isn't much room to step back, because here's the kitchen cabinet. Previous uh, tenant had a cat that ripped in here. This place had chipmunks at one point. It doesn't now. Now I, I found that out when I was cleaning the place out. Anyway, let's just see how it looks. If I put my the camera lens roughly in the center. I'm just eyeballing. Uh, maybe that's just a hair off. I mean, everything else looks okay. I just want to check something. That's on the line. So like I said, it's just a quick reference. I'm just gonna, yeah, the, actually the pin plate is a, kinda turned a little that way, so that's why it didn't line up. So I'm gonna line myself up with the head pin and yeah, more or less it's pretty much okay. 
just like the real places, they're not perfectly lined up or anything. So, and like I said, there's a fudge factor. That's why this game is so hard when you play it for real in a real bowling alley. All right, I got that. Color in the holes and that'll be it for me today. Well, as you can see, I, well, for the most part, I've colored them in and then I did take a final check with the level to see that over time the plate has warped enough that I did take the pin plate off. I'm not going to do that for these things. That's going to be what it is, although from this point onward everything was leveled off, so any warping is the nature of the beast. Anyway, so I straighten that out. It's a lot straighter. It's not perfect. There's still if I haven't mentioned it, there's still a, a crown at the very back. Probably can kind of see it a little bit, but, well, you know, like I say, in a real canopy bowling alley, it, things aren't all that straight or even either. So, it's definitely a lot better than what it was. And I got something else to show you. Well, besides the fact that I replaced a 60 watt bulb that was here with this thing which also does colors but this is not necessarily what I'm really here to show you and it remembers what state it was on that's good anyway as I made this door it's hard to see the detail and the funny thing is, I set it up so when it was being painted and glued, that it was warped to the same angle that this wall is, so we don't need this anymore. So that this side w went in further than this. Well, nature decided to play a really nasty joke on us and made it warp in the exact opposite direction it needs to be in. And... I test fitted this thing before putting the hinges on it and it fit just perfectly fine. Now, it doesn't. Yes, something went wrong there. It's rubbing along the top. In fact, it's gouging the paint off there. So, and if we can actually shut it, it's like a suddenly about an eighth of an inch too short here even though it all fit when I did the test run. And this is all splitting apart because, well, when I shave off here and shave down there, we're going to have, have to repaint anyway, but kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Have not done the second coat here. Yeah, I'm beginning to think that it's not really going to get any brighter. The white's just going to pretty much stay as it is because I put three coats here and it doesn't look any different. Well, I mean, I'm going to give it a shot. It probably because I didn't let it fully, fully dry. It was dry to the touch, but probably not enough. Anyway, that's what we got. That's got to come down, get shaved, repaint that end and that end, and then get that going. That's drying, so that's a good thing. Also, we've got the hardwood. That's been acclimating. It's acclimated a little too long now. This is back here. And as I said, there's a, the cross beam will partially go over this and get screwed in, but it's, it's fairly solid now, but a little more will never hurt, especially since this sticks out a little bit. And that's been fully painted and Starting the other side, I couldn't reach before. So, new light fixture, just like this one over here. New door that needs to be taken off and trimmed down. That's what we got for you. As we have discussed, the pin plate is currently being held down. I think it's already dried. So, I cut and put together the the underlayment for the main section. This section is going to be a separate project because we got to attach the gutter piece and the board that goes from there to there. Then measure everything 
and what will happen is with the extra piece that's currently out there which I'm using to support other other things right now is cut it to this and we're going to glue the boards to that piece and hopefully we'll have a nice solid board because as I said want to make this as light as we can and removable so we can get big things in and out say if Big Bertha decides to die which according to the last service it ain't going anywhere anytime soon unless I want to get, to get rid of it. So, surprisingly, this actually went pretty smoothly. Everything seems to line up. And you might notice I have tape on it to hold it in place. And probably wondering why and not in the upper left corner. Because one, we're starting in the upper left corner. And two, when we start nailing down the finished floor... The nails are going to hold this down, and I don't want to nail this in to find out that a nail hole I made for this is where a nail already exists. So you're killing two birds with one stone, and the tape will hold things down good enough that once we get the first few pieces down, everything's going to be exactly where it's going to stay. So we got that, and because here, very early July, even in Last couple of weeks of June, it doesn't seem to want to stop raining. So instead of being able to do this, I put coats two and three. Boy, that light bar thing. Annoying as hell, but that's a thing. Is I put coats two and three of the white part down. The letters will be black. The ball will be black. The red stripe hasn't been put in the pin yet. Because like I said, fourth and final coat. It seems that the line that I did to draw in the letters, you know, to trace the logo onto the wall. Seems to like to bleed through it. So yeah, four coats, I'm calling it good. It's, it's getting closer and closer, but it requires so much. It's just a massive project that's, it's not really worth that much time to get it that much better. And the door is upstairs, the primer and Two coats of paint on the upper and this side have been done. It's probably drying. At this point, if it still doesn't fit and it's only in a couple of spots, we'll just open it, put some plywood down, just do local touch-ups. I think we're at that point. So that's dead last. We need that and the board straddling it. And now we got to cut this sucker and start putting down the floor and hoping that it will actually work. I last resort is to glue them down, but I would rather nail them so they have more movement. So that's it for now. See you a little later. Well, this row is not actually secured quite yet. That looks like it's out of whack, but if you're not watching vertically on a phone, you can tell that it's actually a uh, the grain of the wood looks more like a knot that's stretched as far as possible and yeah the ends didn't come out quite right because hey who knew that three doesn't divide into 42 very evenly so anyway so yeah the ends had to be cut there was a like a half inch and of course the saw wanders ever so slightly so there's edges where it doesn't quite meet up with the alley for sure and it's very visible so probably gonna make a thick layer of the uh, thick layer of wood uh, filler and you know, fill in the gaps. See how that goes. Also, finally cut the set, the, you know, the removable layer part, the underlayment. And you'll notice if YouTube compressions allow you to see it, is that this piece of masonite is upside down. And that is done on purpose because this is the removable section. And I wanted to cut and fit this before putting that guy and that guy into position. Because at that point, 
I will have the final dimensions from there to here and start cutting and gluing, that's right, not nailing, gluing the wood to this because this is going to be removable because that part already weighs a ton and I try to make it as light as I can. And while I'm putting in the boards from left to right, this one I screwed up and looked pretty ugly. So it'll be along the left edge, so you're not gonna notice it. Is be able to cut it to where the boards, yeah. I measured them, but they didn't seem to come to the edge like they should have. So I can kind of correct that as I do this. But the first things first is attaching this to that and that to both the return and this. And they will be put in a way that they can be easily removed so the screws aren't getting painted or maybe it might take a Q-tip with some of the paint and color in some of the wood just to make it look slightly better. Anyway, that's where we're at at this point. And yes, it's hard to see, but I'll zoom in. I still have stuff over there I need to get out of there, but the... Uh, so it's not going to show. And I don't think the light is strong enough. Yeah, right now... Yeah, right now I only have one outlet and it's charging up that light, so... If there's a thunderstorm, I can go and nail this and have at least some sort of light to work with, but the pin plate is down and I just need to get that crap off there. I also need to put a lock, okay, wrong button. I need to put a lock on that door because when pins hit it, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to hold anything back. Oh, and while I'm at it, I don't know if you saw it, the back curtain is up. That's what that is in the back. It might be a little hard to see, but that's the back curtain. It's up. And hit the right button again. There we go. We have the lane and we have a light that's not shutting off. There we go. A section it needs to be done. Glued and just floating in place. Again, once this and that is installed so that hopefully there'll be, you know, friction fit, I hope. Anyway, that is what we got. And the first coat of black, it needs another. Definitely needs another. And I didn't notice this till after I did it. I screwed up the R. And that's long time ago when I was doing the white part. This one's okay. I'm sure if you're looking at it, you can see where I went a little wrong. But, well, I traced on the wrong side of the line when I did the white part. Anyway, still looks good. The door shuts. I gotta put a back, I gotta put a stop on it, but it does shut. It doesn't want to stay shut though. That's why I'm gonna put magnetic catches on the, uh, on there. It's okay for now because that area needs, you know, uh, needs to breathe as well. All right. Time to put this part together, secure this, and make the floating floor for this. Well, everything is, it's done. Just need to do some touch-up work. I've unfortunately got urethane on the pin plate, but not where it matters much. Yeah, the coating is what it is. There's a hair or two in it. And yes, like I said, that is intentionally slightly higher than the lane so that the removable section won't 
cause a ball to skip if it's dropped that, you know, that far away. So, yeah, we still got the masking tape to try to keep it from on the gutters. Did a little touch-up work there. I've touched up that wall a little bit. That still needs to be done. And, of course, here's the wall. Grant Street Candle Pins logo. All nice and finished. And there's the door. There's the whole setup right there. So, for the most part, this is done. And I do apologize for overlapping content because there's been quite a few long gaps and yeah I didn't have time to truly set this whole thing up so it's just running off the laptop for now and like I said I might be doing some of course to keep the pins from knocking this open I got this heavy duty bolt and of course there are the pins this is all staging the bad news is I gotta wait till at least another week and a half for the minimum cure time for this stuff. It's dry, but it has to cure for at least two weeks, so we can't really use it. There's still some there's still a mess here and there. There's still paint cans over there. But this is pretty much done, and I couldn't come up with uh, really good before and afters outside of a couple of them. But, here it is. Grant Street Candle Pins is done. And, like I said, there's only a handful of before and afters, but enjoy. George F551 saying, hope you enjoyed, and have a good one.